Yeah, that sounds great. It's 928. Let's do it. Yep. We're ready. Okay. <laughs>
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. We come to this place, each of us on our own path. The path is winding and the path is not always clear and the path changes, but we are here. God is walking us home. What a gift it is not to not walk alone. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you, all hearts are open. All desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Holy God, you speak to us in scripture and in prayers, in sunrises and sunsets, in friends and in strangers. In, in dreams and in songs, you are speaking all the time and how often do we miss it? Still our minds so that we can listen with a depth that we have not heard before. Still our hearts so that we can receive with open arms what it is you are offering us today. We know you are speaking, so we are listening. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Um, a reading from Jeremiah. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See? I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied by my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 84 by alternate verse. How dear to me is your dwelling, O God of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. 
The sparrow has found her a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O God of hosts, my ruler and my God. Happy are they who dwell in the house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. O God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to be shepherd, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Friends, I speak to you in the name of God who was and is and is to come. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, It's really good to be with you this morning. I'm really grateful that you're here. I'm Reverend Sarah Iggs Cardwell, and I serve as the chaplain at Holy Trinity School in Bowie. Now, you might have noticed it's kind of farther back, but there's this image that I've had up behind me. I'm going to move it a little closer. I can grab it. Here we go. So you can see it. Um, So my wife and I, we found this image a few years ago. Um, It's got the three magi um, on camels with this kind of rainbowy sunset, dawn, not sure which background. But we found this a few years ago um, and it's become one of our favorite uh, decorations. And that year we put it up. um, And then when Epiphany came and went in early January, um, it was time to, you know, take down the stockings and the tree and all the decorations. We started talking about how much we liked it and maybe it would be a good idea to have the Magi with us throughout the year. And since then, it's actually stayed up on our wall. For a while it was in our bedroom. Now it's in this room, which uh, is our dining room slash family room slash Zoom worship room. You've probably got a space like that in your home. Um, But why have the Magi with us all year? And what might we glean from this story about these mysterious travelers and their encounter with Jesus as an infant. Well, let's rewind just a little bit um, and remind ourselves what's happening in the text. For a lot of you, this might be kind of a familiar one, a familiar part of the story, Um, but sometimes in their familiarity, kind of we can assume 
we know what's in there and it can be good just to revisit and relook at what it actually says. So Matthew's gospel tells us that wise men from the east, um, they've come to Jerusalem after seeing this bright star rising. Um, and they took this to signal uh, a significant event as many um, kind of weather astrological signs were often interpreted. And they take it to be the heralding of a royal birth in Judea. And their search, it brings them before uh, Herod the Great, who was the ruler of Judea at that time and was ruling under Caesar Augustus. And Herod the Great, he was really notorious for his brutality and his paranoia, which were not, not really a great combo. Um, he had wives and sons murdered uh, because he feared that they were plotting against him. So as you might imagine, news of this king of the Jews being born, it does not go over well with Herod. Um, it says that Herod was frightened and a troubled leader uh, leads to troubled masses with all of Jerusalem joining in this fear under their unsettled and brutal leader. And a few verses later, outside of what we actually read today, we learn that Herod gives this um, ruthless and heartbreaking order to have all infant boys in Bethlehem killed. And this sets the Holy Family off on their flight to Egypt to escape his wrath in Matthew's gospel. But before that happens, um, Herod sends the wise men off to Bethlehem to find the child um, using their skills and the knowledge he's kind of gleaned from his uh, scribes. And they do find the child. It says that when they see the star stop, they are overwhelmed with joy. And they enter the house, they kneel down and they pay him homage and they offer their gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh. And then they're warned in a dream um, not to go back to Herod. And they listen to that warning. And it says that they leave for their own country by another road. So we've inherited traditions that paint these magi as three wise men as kings, um, but Matthew never tells us that there are kings or how many there are. You probably noticed in the picture I held up, there are three and they're all wearing these kind of crown-like headdresses. Well, the notion that they're kings, um, it comes from lots of uh, Old Testament interpretations of passages like Psalm 72 and Isaiah 60 that talk about these Gentile kings coming and being drawn to the light of the king of Israel. And that number three, we mostly get because it talks about three gifts. So there's an assumption there that maybe that equals three people. But Elizabeth Johnson writes, um, what we kind of do know, what we can assume is that the Magi were most likely astrologers, maybe even Zoroastrian priests from Persia, they were definitely Gentiles. They weren't from Israel. And that means they probably didn't have a, a great familiarity with um, the scriptures, but they do know how to read the stars. And so that's how God reaches out to them. He uses the language uh, and the, the symbols that they know to speak to them. It's a really like great contrast between the reaction of these astrologers to the possibility of this royal birth, that stands in great contrast to how King Herod reacts, right? The Magi are filled with joy when the star stops over Bethlehem. Herod is left just stewing in his fear. The Magi bring gifts while Herod plots to take away the life of anyone who threatens his power. And in this reading, um, it's really myrrh. That's the one of the gifts that I find the most intriguing. Gold maybe makes sense as a gift for a king. Um, and while we're not as familiar with frankincense, it was often used in worship and it's used to make these kind of fragrant perfumes. And myrrh in a lot of ways is like frankincense. Um, it comes from the resin of a tree. Um, drawing again from Elizabeth Johnson, she writes about some of these really distinctive properties though that myrrh has. Um, in Arabic, that word means bitter. And it's got this yellow white resin um, that seeps out of the trunks of small kind of um, scraggly <laughs> desert trees. And it comes out when the tree is wounded and kind of chipped away to some degree. And these teardrop shapes appear um, like the tree itself is weeping. 
And when air hits these droplets of resin, the color changes to gold and then amber, and then almost this kind of scarlet color. And it starts to look like small drops of blood. And then that resin is gathered and it's ground into a powder, to a powder and it's burned as incense um, or just used for its fragrance. Myrrh also has these medicinal qualities. Um, it's used as both an antiseptic and an analgesic. In Mark's um, account of the crucifixion, we hear that Jesus is offered wine that's been mixed with myrrh when he's on the cross. And in John's gospel, it's talked about uh, as being present at Jesus's burial because it was often used for embalming. So all of this makes myrrh um, a really bittersweet yet also appropriate gift for infant King Jesus who is born into a world of people like Herod who are plotting to kill the innocent. It's fitting for a king who will endure a crown of thorns as he's put to death for the threat he poses to empire. It's appropriate for a shepherd king who lays, who speaks of um, laying down his life for his sheep. So we're reminded with myrrh that this infant king, that Jesus, he will die a cruel death and it's out of love for us. But at the same time, already at his uh, kind of beginning, we get a pointing to the fact that there is also healing to be found through Jesus's life and death and resurrection. And that healing extends to all of us. So I wanna come back to this image for just a second. And I wonder, I know probably the glare doesn't make it a great <laughs> um, transfer all, but when you look at it, I wonder if you think the Magi are going to see Jesus or are they taking that other road home? I think for me, depending on the day, I can see it um, either way. And both of them remind me of critical parts of our journey as Christians. When we're drawn towards Jesus, coming with joy and curiosity and awe to see something new that's happening. When God uses what we know, like he did with the stars for the Magi to draw us closer, if we're willing to open our eyes and our hearts to see that and to notice it. And those times when we're being called to take a new way home, to go along a different and an unknown road, to step out of what we know, to resist the call of those in power, to be complicit with them in their attempts to hoard it. We're entering the epiphany season. It officially begins on January 6th. And so this time of year in the church calendar, our journey is aligned with that of the Magi through readings and songs like the opening one we sang together. And my prayer for us is that God will help us remember that their journey and our journey continues beyond the page. And we ask, I ask God to help us to keep seeking God, um, Emmanuel, and to help us heed God's call to find new ways home in times of uncertainty. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the one holy and living God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Raising our voices in proclamation and praise, let us rejoice as we offer our prayers to God, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for peacemakers who toil in troubled lands and in families of the discontented, that the Prince of Peace may give them words of wisdom as they seek to encourage new means of communication and the mending of relationships. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who exercise leadership throughout our church, that they may bear in their actions the love of Christ, enlightening the hearts of those who have a hidden faith and strengthening those of a weak spirit. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Church of the Epiphany, BC, Welcome Table and Street Church, and Epiphany Church, Forestville. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president, members of our legislative bodies and those who serve on the Supreme Court, that they may honor our historic inheritance and take us along new pathways in the service of bettering our nation. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the noonday of their lives, including Archbishop Tutu, Donna Collin, and Jerry Warsham, and for parents who grieve the loss of children, that they may be comforted by the father of all of us, whose only son was not spared an early death. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, remembering those who have been mentors and teachers and through whose companionship we have experienced the riches of divine grace. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Please add in your intercession silent order. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I imagine that for the Magi, walking to Bethlehem was not easy. I imagine that following a star for navigation was definitely not easy. However, I imagine that the hardest part might have been not knowing where the road would lead. Friends, we are not always the best versions of ourselves when we are faced with uncertainty or changing plans. Facing the unknown pulls on every ounce of our anxiety and fear. It rings all our stress alarms and can erode our patience, our calm, our sense of perspective. Fortunately for us, we worship a God who is gracious beyond imagination and meets us on every twist and turn of the road home. So let us pray together now, knowing that even in our worst moments, we are held by God. God of changed plans. 
the Magi heard in a dream that they were to take a new way home, a different path, an untraveled road. And to our amazement, they did just that. The Magi packed their bags and went home by another way. We wish that change could be easy for us, but more often than not, when whispers of change come, we tend to clench our fists and hold on tighter. Forgive us for resisting change that might be holy. Forgive us for ignoring that there is more than one road home. Forgive us for failing to hear your invitation. Guide our steps to unfamiliar places. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Friends, no matter which roads we take in this one wild and precious life, God walks with us. God never leaves our side. When the road changes and we find ourselves on a new path home, God is always there. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 Peace, everyone. everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, Peace everyone. Peace. 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 <laughs>
So if you're uh, interested in that, again, you can contact me or Cheryl or Mother Maria, and we'll tell you what tell you all about that too. Let's see. I had one other announcement. Oh, keep an eye out for uh, your email in the midweek this week. Um, we'll as we uh, we'll be making a decision this week as to whether we will meet online or in person in the coming um, week. So keep an eye out for an announcement for that. Uh, Mother Maria will be back in the office, I believe, on Tuesday or Wednesday, and we'll be meeting uh, to make those decisions. So, Cheryl, did I miss anything? You got everything covered, Sue. Thank you. All right. Hey, so will you forget our place tomorrow night from three to six, if anybody wants to come and help out. You can call Deanna or go online. Thank you, Jan. And anybody else that I missed an announcement? Oh, okay. Well, friends, um, receive this blessing. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks on others with kindness. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. And yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Remember this, live into this, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. Um, no post load either. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Those are all organ pieces that I couldn't adapt to the piano. <laughs>